Time for a question and answer with Nicky Henderson, the Seven Barrows Maestro on the Cheltenham Festival. Thank you for joining us, Nicky. So the first question is, what do you remember of your first Cheltenham Festival winner, which I believe hopefully will see you then in the champion hurdle? What a way to start. Well, it was. Um, well, he was a remarkable creature. We've been trying for a few years, I think. So we'd started in 78, and that was 85. Hmm. So, so it had taken 40 sort years. Of six, seven years. But to be fair, I don't think we've got a clue what we were doing. Do you mean that? <laughs> well, I'd had a good grounding with Fred Winter and some great times, but at the time, I, I suspect it was... We never believed it was going to happen, probably, for a start, so... I, I asked you, do you mean that? Because Martin Pipe always makes out that he was totally clueless and just guessing. <laughs> and whenever he says that, you kind of think, but you're Martin Pipe, you, you don't guess. But obviously, everyone has to start somewhere. So, but if you, you've learned from Fort Wooden, you, you'll have learned a few things, won't you, from him? From Fred Winter, yeah. <laughs> Fred Winter, sorry. Um, oh, you did. And we had some great years and, a, and plenty of festival winners, too. It was three days at the time, and it was. Um, I've seen some interviews and in an interview I did after the race. It's embarrassing. I just hope I didn't sound as stupid as I was, <laughs> <laughs> or it looked. It's dreadful. Um, but there you go. Race you changed quite. What well, no, we'd line this up for no, two no, years. I did not. <laughs> it was just the. I, th I think I've tried to change everything, including my accent since then. <laughs> No, it was. It was a. It was a great day, and he went on to. You know, when he after he'd won it three times, um, probably things did sink in a bit. And to be fair, after that had happened, things suddenly started to grow. It made a very big difference to life. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. we were. Uh, you know, we'd been knocking on the door, and we'd had a few things that won some good races. Yeah, we had, but um, you know, we hadn't had a festival winner and. Rather like we still haven't had a grand national winner, but we were, we got nearer then than we did we ever have done recently. I mean, that was just a two or three years after the Michael Dickinson one, two, three, four, five in the in the Cheltenham Gold Cup. You win your first Cheltenham Festival race with a horse who goes on to win three champion hurdles. Did you think this isn't that difficult? Like, <laughs> well, it, it, it was difficult actually with him because if people say and we mind these horses too much at the moment. I mean, if they want to go back to those days, <laughs> those people can, that can remember see you then, don't, don't forget. Don't feed them the info, Nicky. <laughs> the info is, well, he was very quickly christened see you when. Right. He had terrible front legs. So what you're saying is you've got back form on this. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean, more guilty with this horse than I will be with any horse. And he was virtually, he had legs of glass. I had a marvellous vet, Frank Mann, who was a great friend and a great vet. And he really needed a year off from day one. Um, but we decided to try and work our way through it. And it was one run and in and out. That was all you could get. And then quick fix and get him ready again. And I think probably if you'd have given him a year off to mend those legs, he would have been a real, really... He'd have been the household name of all names because you could have run him properly. But we decided to do it that way and he was he was actually savage. I mean he would you couldn't go into the box with him. And um I mean if you if you missed his teeth, you've got his hind legs. He was pretty quick. Do you think in some ways, because of that horse, that has affected your the way you look at it? Because you your first big horse was fragile and it would be very easy after that to to have set in your mind that you've always got I to know. mine them a bit. No, I don't. And no. I hope we don't. I mean, there have been, you know, there are a lot of reasons why you mind a horse. I mean, it, it depends. If things go swimmingly, it's easy. Mm. But these, you know, as we can see with our issues that are going on this very day, there's nothing you can do about it. You've got to just take the sensible road and you've got to get back on the track. We've got our way of doing it. There are plenty of others. Mm. There's going to be problems, but that horse was ridiculous. I mean, those were wicked front legs. You know, there, there was hardly another gallop in the places we took him to. I mean, everybody was uh, used to come here to the, use the gallops we're now using ourselves. Um, and Peter Warwin let us come there. I went to Henry Candies, we went to the seaside. We had our own swimming pool at the time. You wouldn't have got there without the swimming pool. Mm. 
Um, it was a it was a hairy, scary journey, but you know we got to Cheltenham every year on a very, very thin ice. Yeah, really thin ice. Of course, it was we, good fun. We, of your seventy-three Cheltenham festival successes, is the one moment that you would like to be able to relive every day again? So, in other words, the one out of the seventy-three so far yeah. that has touched you more than the rest. Easy. Sprinter's second champion chase, the comeback one. And that was very special. I mean, again, where had he been? He'd been in the wilderness for a year and a half. He'd won the champion chase. We had a problem with his heart. Um, and <laughs> they'll probably say they don't even believe me there, but you jolly well got to. He had a fibrillating heart and he was, he was rubbish for a year. Came back and won the Schler that autumn scrambled home at Kempton at Christmas and then he came back to the champion chase it wasn't even favorite anyway I mean that was the most remarkable day I've ever seen I think I used to say well actually dad put a roof on Cheltenham Sprinter Sacra took it off um, the crowd and everybody was it was quite unbelievable and I think people that were there will say the same it was probably one of the most extraordinary days we've ever seen the it was magic and it was very special. As a trainer, not only therefore probably your Cheltenham Festival, moment, but basically the, the moment of your training career, would you say? That was, that was you probably won't say it, but well, it's it genius you, to get you, him back. Yeah, it wasn't a genius. It was just with a lot of help. So very, but I've always, you just got to surround yourself by really, really good people. Mm. There were a lot of people involved in that performance. And, but no more than the team here mm. and I got, you know we, we had to identify the problem first that would belong to Celia Ma in Newmarket who you know really did help us a lot down the road and always believed we could do it if you could get the horse's confidence back and that's what was lacking and it was all about doing that and we had to get the horse to believe in himself again and believe that it wasn't going to happen again and that was the puzzle that we finally solved, and that's, in a nutshell, a brief of the, the story. You won the Johnny Henderson twice. Why have you not won it more? <laughs> it's funny, we have two-mile hurdlers galore. Well, actually, we've had a lot of very, very high-class two-mile chasers. So I think the champion chase, we have won that. Six. Six times. Yeah. Um, I... And yet, those two-mile handicappers, well, they're sort of halfway between a very good horse and a very ordinary horse. You need that good middle of the road handicap. I mean, I ran six in it one year and finished first and second. I didn't realize the winner was mine. The JP had so many different hats on and it was one of his beat one of uh, another one of our own. And I thought it was somebody else. I was screaming at it and I suddenly <laughs> realized it was actually my own horse. <laughs> <laughs> Belvano ridden by Paul Carberry. It was one of the great rides Typical of all Carberry. times. Mm. Beat, thanks for that. Um, it was <laughs> tremendous. Yeah, typical Carberry. Okay, so you are Britain's most winning trainer at the festival. This is a question that at no other stage will you be asked pre Cheltenham Festival. This is why it's unique to Sky Sports. Of all the other handlers that have won there since you started training, which one do you have most respect for? Are we going English and Irish? Anything you like. It's I how think, you interpret the well, question. I don't, yeah, you Go very, Francois yeah, Very Duman, hard if you to like. say one. I mean, what Will is achieving is unbelievable. I mean, the, the unbelievable thing is to be able to find that number of horses that he could bring over here. It's good fun. We get on very well. But trying to fight off the enemy here is he's not an enemy at all. I say he's a good friend. But we'll have plenty of fun doing it. Mm. I think what he's doing, you could go back and... and the. You know, what Michael Dickinson did that day is, has to be pretty unique. I think there have all been all sorts of amazing performances. It's a, it's a field of great dreams, great well, ups and downs, highs and lows. It's, it's just good fun. I, you know, when anybody who gets there and enjoys it, well, great, because that's what we live for. You deal with owners every day, and we all know that just like in, in every walk of human life, there were going to be different characters out there. Is Willie Mullins' skill, the handling of all those 
egos and those big owners as much as the training of an actual horse? Well, I think it has to be. Where I find it, it, the most remarkable thing is that at this current stage, we haven't got a clue what's going into what race. Now, whether Willie's got an idea, I don't... I mean, sure he has. He's got a big team with him there that they know what they've got. But again, when you've got that many horses and that many owners, I admire the way he manages... To, if I run two in the race, it's always a disaster. Always ends in tears. <laughs> Somebody hasn't got the right jockey and somebody, oh God. Then you go and finish first and second and you feel an absolute hound. You've gone and beaten your own horse with your own horse. Well, that seems stupid, but it's going to happen. Everybody wants to go to Cheltenham. But I'd, by the way, he manages to run five in a race without upsetting anybody because I'd find that impossible. You were down to your last tenner. <laughs> Do you have it on Steve Smith Eccles, Barry Geraghty or Mick Fitzgerald? <laughs> Where are, we, where are we jumping the last or halfway up the running? Well, I mean, you'd want to have it on air halfway up the running, wouldn't you? I was going to say, <laughs> you might just, if it's, if it's after the last, you might have Eck. I think I'd leave it to two long leggedy horsemen to jump the last first. Mm. OK, so Garrity or Fitzy. So <laughs> you've got to choose one. You can't sit on the fence here, Nicky. I totally can. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's ask you something just a bit more. The qualities of those three individuals, they've been huge stars for you. What, what I mean, Eck... When he was... Uncontrollable. Uncontrollable, yeah. <laughs> Barry? Uh, con reasonably controllable. And Fitzy? Um, couldn't stop talking. Um, <laughs> from the day we first sat next door, and when he was a traditional in the West Country, we, he came up to have a chat with me one night. Um, and as you can see from this morning, he's still here now, mm. uh, which is lovely. We were, the great thing about them all, and, you know, and, and many others, and Nico as well, because he comes into that mould of the Geraghty Fitzgerald. Well, I didn't want to include Nico. him. I thought it was unfair. Yeah, but I would. Just in case you went egg. No, <laughs> exactly. But I mean, if you, they're, just, they're slightly different. Um, one was a, Eck was a jockey. Hmm. Uh, Barry and uh, Mick and, and Nico would be much more of a frank sort of jockey. Although Frank and Eck were the best mates in the world. Hmm. Um, but they were different types of jockeys, both. Absolutely top, top. But the great thing at the end of the day is to be able to say they all were then and they very much still are now great mates of all of us, of the whole yard, family, everybody. I mean, we had some great times. We'll always look back. They're all still involved in some way or another. Mm. Um, Barry, Barry was here two days ago riding Sprinter Sacra. Mm. Fitzy was here today. <laughs> yeah, Fitzy was here today. Yeah. AP's normally here. Um, he's in Ireland today, I know, because I sort of texted him last night saying you were coming, and then he said he, he wasn't. Yeah, thanks, Nicky. We'll move <laughs> on to the next question. Yeah, you had to get that in, didn't you? Well done. Um, we know that probably, I would say, in your career, the most agonising defeat you've had to endure was, was Altiel's defeat by surname at Ascot. But at the Cheltenham Festival, is there a defeat that sticks in your mind, that hurts, that really hurt on the day, that oh, he went back in the car crying, basically. I think, funny enough, you'd go back to a day that, if you say hurts, it was, about, it was the, in a triumph hurdle when See You Then actually ran for us, but I'd only had him 10 days. And I had a little horse there called Chill Down, Mm. who was the favourite in England, see then was the favourite in Ireland. But then we'd bought him, Frank Mann bought him to go to Italy. So he stayed over with us and ran for us in the Triumph Hurdle. Well, Childan, unfortunately, had a fatal accident at the last first time round. And I went down to him and I adored him. And when they jumped the last, Tommy Carmody, would you believe, mm. was riding see you then. And he came to the last, landed in front, and went off up the hill. And I thought he'd won, but it didn't matter to me. What mattered was the horse I was with. And actually, they announced the photograph, and he hadn't even won. I think they would agree he beat us, but something. It didn't right. even matter, because the horse I was with was far more important. I didn't realise what CU then was going to become. But um, chill down, we'd lost him. And that, to me, yeah, that, that rocked us. And 
you know, one's had to accept those things, sadly, over the years, and hopefully not too many. Um, but, yeah, there have been some near misses. But I think Mike Bite's Gold Cup was probably um, a bit tough. He'd just run his socks off with um, Dickie Johnson on the Tizard Horse, Native River. Native yeah. River, yeah. And it was desperate ground, and he just got, there was a patch just after the last fence, and it just, he got into that, and he couldn't get out of it, and he, he just got lost out there. Well, um, hold on, though. I mean, I mean, for me, he completely outran himself. I mean, if Mike Bike was a Gold Cup winner, we'd all be sitting here thinking, how did Mike Bike win the Gold Cup? He won the RSA, he won all sorts of yeah, things. He, he won a King George. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't know how he did that either, Nicky. Let's move on. Um, are you superstitious? And I Very, know you are. Yes. Okay, tell us some of your superstitions. Oh, they're, they're ridiculous. Well, tell us. Well, we, we sort of like magpies are great. I don't wear green to the races. Well, I like going underneath trains. Any idiot wouldn't walk under a ladder, for goodness sake. I don't know. There is just little salt. I go mad if anybody passes it hand to hand. There you go. With the magpies, I just want to expand on a story I know about. I've got one. two in a cage out there. <laughs> Genuinely. I say good morning to them every morning. <laughs> There's a magpie story, though, going to Ascot one day when you made the missus turn round at the roundabout <laughs> and find another magpie before you'd continue. <laughs> so they say, yeah. <laughs> Which you eventually did. Yeah. But it could have been the same one probably at the time you found it. Um, absolutely mad. What's the green thing? What's that all about? Me. Everyone but green wears green. Green racing at the is, is, is sort of been a funny thing. But everyone wears green. Almost. Well, almost. Not everybody, because I don't. <laughs> I could wear green trousers when I feel like it. Exactly. <laughs> Bad luck. You've ended up with me. Um, right. We've had four day festival for a few years now. Correct. Would you now go back to three days? No, if... I'd go the other way. Five? Mm. I mean, you know that's bonkers, don't you? Well, we got four anyway. And I was, don't I was four, way behind that. Uh, I mean, that was something I did get. But behind. with the benefit it's, it's of the hindsight, way. there were only about three things I've got behind. One is saving Kempton, and the other was getting a fourth day into Cheltenham. It made total sense. Maybe five is slightly overdoing it, but Ascot showed that it could be done comfortably mm. and profitably too, and that's where the sort of it gives us more chances of winning more races. Too, yeah, but that's is, not what it's about, Henry. I didn't say it was. I mm. just said it's, it's, it's as well. Um, For a man who wants the you competition... You don't have to go, you know. It's not compulsory to attend. No, but it's not that, is it? You know it's not that. It's the competition. You want to be seeing the best of the best, and there aren't that many great horses out well, we, we won't go into the depth of the debate, because no. it went on. I... I've got a perfectly good solution to it. You'd certainly only have six races on a day anyway. Well, so you on. only need two. Let's say you're good. So, so you, you change it. I'm happy for that. You change it to six <laughs> races a day. That sounds sensible. I'm, up, I'm already with Would you. Would you start a bit later, wouldn't you? Yeah. Start yeah. a bit later, have six races. Mm. And maybe a, I'd, I'd be quite happy with another five minute gap between races on those. So would I. Days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Why didn't they, did they not in, talk to us? <laughs> right. We'll rattle through the final few questions. Is it a myth that Henderson. Horses always have to have good ground. I think it's pretty true. Okay. You, you don't need to expand. You are treated to dinner at the Cheltenham Festival. What would be on your plate? Uh, in festival week, I think very, very little. Food wouldn't be my greatest... Um... Eating week? No. You'd have a little tipple? Oh, yeah. What would be the tipple? I'd shake a glass of red wine, wouldn't nice you? Nice glass of red. Okay. Uh, do you prefer your horses on the new course or the old course? Yeah, good. I personally don't think it... I mean, would I think about running a horse on either one or the other? No, I wouldn't. I mean, they'd, they'd probably need treating differently. But I wouldn't, wouldn't say, cracky, I'm going to run it on the Tuesday and not the Friday because it's on the other course. Final question. Is the Cheltenham Festival... For you, Nicky Henderson, Britain's winning most trainer at it, the be-all and end-all? No, it's not, because we've got an awful lot of other things to cook along the way, especially Aintree's become great. You look at that Christmas. I mean, the only thing people say that they like to accuse us of, we only work on the, you know, the festival is everything. You only win a novice chase. 
which race you're going to run into at Cheltenham. It's not as if we do it that way. I mean, the whole thing has probably come, but racing's brought it on itself. It's become a bit top heavy. There is room for more festivals, if you like, but the, you know, we've got two or three Cheltenham meetings before Christmas and after. Um, you've got the Newbury in the um, November meeting there. You've got Kempton for the King George meeting. We've got all sorts of really good... Somewhere there's room for expansion. Aintree's wonderful, but it's always just so tight on Cheltenham that we can't treat it a little bit, so you can get the two in. Quite difficult. Pudgestown's good fun. But, yes, it is, it is top-heavy, but I don't think we're particularly guilty of just waiting the whole season. And like I say, with, with Constitution Hill this year, th I mean, the only thing that was unfortunate is we lost the fighting fifth. Yeah. We did lose the fighting fifth. There's no point in saying it was rerun at Sandown. It was rerun at Sandown at half the prize money a fortnight before the Christmas hurdle. You couldn't do that and the Christmas hurdle. So we did lose the fighting fifth. And he would have gone there. We actually did go there and would have run. Shishkin was on the box with him. And my final question on the be-all and end-all, these are mythical races and mythical figures, but most of your leading Cheltenham Festival hopes would be uh, owned by fairly rich, rich individuals. There won't be many that aren't owned by rich people. If there was a 200 grand handicap a month before the Cheltenham Festival and you had the favourite, you could have the favourite, and... He was also that horse favourite for a £100,000 handicap at the festival. What percentage do you think of your owners would say, Nicky, I want to go for the £100,000 handicap at the, ch at the festival rather than the £200,000 one three, three weeks before? If somebody has got one horse, then, you know, if the festival is their dream, which it often is, um, you know, you buy an unbroken three-year-old and somebody says, well, which race is it going to run into the festival? Mm. Well, A, you've got f four or five years to wait, and B, you don't even know if it could gallop or jump. But it's, that's the dream, and it's always, it's always there. A lot of people do. That's what they would just love to do is have a runner there. And you can't blame them. It is the mecca. And um, if that's what they wish, then I don't say their wishes are my command, but we're in this to give them fun, have fun, enjoy. Mm. This isn't a commercial exercise. So if they want to choose the Cheltenham glory or the extra prize money, that's their, mm. that's their decision. It's, um, it's all about having these horses are for, the, for their pleasure. Mm. And we've got to make it fun. Sometimes when things are going badly wrong, it's not fun, it's absolutely murderous ringing them up and telling them we've got problems. Well, um, so we, that's no fun. So if you want some fun, come and join us and let's go to Cheltenham.